Well, good morning, everyone. Good to be back. Uh, I was gone for two weeks, as you all are aware. Uh, first things first, uh, it sounds like we ran out of bulletins in the back. Uh, if anyone didn't get one, uh, can they raise their hand so we know who needs one still for the order of service? Everyone got one? Okay, all right, so I guess a uh, couple of announcements really quick here. Council and voters meetings will not be held this week. It's been pushed out uh, Monday, February 6th, and February 8th are going to be the next times that we're going to be doing those meetings. Uh, Meals on Wheels, Zion is to deliver meals for the month of February. This is a calendar on the desk, there's a calendar on the desk in the Narthax there. Please take a look and see if you can help in any way. Um, greeters and ushers, we're looking, uh, men and women, confirmants, uh, please consider helping the congregation get back to normal by prayerfully considering becoming a greeter or an usher. We need your help. Please contact the church office if you would be willing to serve. Once a night, there's going to be a new Bible study starting. Mr. J is going to be leading that. Um, it's right after Faith Weavers at approximately 7 o'clock p.m. For more information about what he's going to be talking about on that, you can talk with him. I believe he's here today. So if you want more information about it, uh, you can ask him more about it. Um, VBS Planning Committee. Uh, Mr. J is already beginning to plan for it, but if you would like to be involved in this process, please come to our first meeting on Tuesday, January 31st, and it's beginning at 5.30 in the Church Fellowship Hall. Uh, couple, one, two, two more announcements here. The Senior Center is having a fundraiser. Um, it was It's 10 to 1 today, so it's going on, I believe, right now. Uh, but it's a lasagna dinner, so if you're interested in maybe getting some lasagna or something like that, that's something out there for an option. Uh, on a personal matter, uh, many of you already know that I was out of town for the last two weeks. My grandfather was uh, in, the, in the hospital uh, the first week that I went home. He ended up with, he had pneumonia, he had just fallen, and he had an RSV. All three of those things were happening while he was in the hospital. My parents didn't know if he was going to make it, so uh, I ended up going home a week earlier than anticipated to be with my grandfather as he was moved into hospice care and, and whatnot. Um, on a lighter note, he's still hanging in there, so the, uh, the nice thing is the illness has kind of run its course, but he's definitely a lot weaker than he was, and he's not eating as much or whatever, but he's on hospice care. Could be any day now, but he was still hanging out when I left. So just uh, just a heads up on that one. He's doing very well, and I thank everyone for their prayers of consideration and stuff while he, while he's on and uh, being with him during this time of need and stuff. So with that, uh, we can begin with our opening hymn, hymn 915. <coughs>
Lord's Day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. St. Matthew writes that Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Let us respond, confessing our sins and asking our Lord's forgiveness. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we confess our sins to you. We are too much a part of this fallen world. Because our citizenship is in heaven, invade our thoughts, words, and deeds by your gracious power. Help us to live each day as pilgrims heading to the eternal promised land. Turn us from our sinful direction to follow our Savior's gracious lead, walking in ways pleasing to you, for Jesus' sake. Amen. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Be assured that Jesus' blood and walk rescue, you are already citizens of the kingdom of heaven. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infirmities and stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah chapter 9, 1 through 4. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy, they rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. This is the word of the Lord. God. Our epistle reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 10 through 18. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I, that I baptized none of you except Christmas and Gaius, so that no one may say that they were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanas. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand for the Gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now when he heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulon and Naphtali, so that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. The land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, the Galilee of the Gentiles. The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. 
and for those dwelling in the region and shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going out from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother. And the boat was Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boats and their father and followed him. And he went through all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, those having seizures and paralytics, and he healed them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis, and from Jerusalem and Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. We join together now in the words of the Nicene Creed found in the back of your hymnals. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of the Son before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten of the name, the being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things reign, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory, to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite the children forward for the children's message. Just a list. You don't need to tell me about them. Just a list of some games you might have played that involve following a leader. Yes. Simon says, anyone else think of any? Maybe Red Light, Green Light? Mr. Cannon? Okay. Maybe Run, She, Run? That involves kind of following a leader. Raise your hand if you've ever played the game Marco Polo. Okay, I see a few people who have played before. Reagan, can you tell me, how do you play Marco Polo? Mm-hmm. 
Okay. So we're going to play a version of that game, but in reverse. I'm going to need a caller, and the person who calls is going to say, come and follow me. Not, and so let me explain the rules. So you're going to put, so whoever's calling is going to call and you're going to have your eyes open. Then I'm going to play the person who's searching, but I'm going to have my eyes closed. Now, I don't want anyone, whoever my caller is, I don't want you going over there. I don't want you going up the stairs. You can go all the way this whole length of this area right here. And I'm going to see if I can try to find you. And I only have 20 seconds to do it. This first time, though, I want you to not say anything. Whoever I choose, let's just, for the sake of making it easy, let's have Reagan do the first one, if you wouldn't mind. So what you're going to do is you're going to not say anything. I'm going to go over to the door. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to spin around a few times. And then once I start my clock, you can move around in this area, and I'm going to try to find you without saying anything. All right, so let me go over to the door. I'll let you pick a spot. Taylor, would you help me out and be my second person? Okay, so what I need you to do is this time we're going to play again. But I'm going to go over the door, I'm going to turn around, we're going to do the whole same thing. But this time, once you find your spot, I want you to stay there and not move. But this time, I want you to call out to me. As soon as you found your spot and I've started the timer, then I want you to call out, come follow me, and then we'll see if I can find you. Does that make sense? All right. Again, you guys have an important job too. If you see that I'm gonna run into something or fall over, I would appreciate if you told me to stop, especially if I'm gonna wander out into the crowd. All right, now because I learned my lesson. between the first time we played and the second time we played? Yes, Harper. So she called me, and what did I do once she called? I listened, and I... I didn't have my eyes closed anymore. Taylor, you can sit down. Thank you so much. So the whole reason why we did this game was, do you think I would have been able to find Reagan? If she was any, go, able to go anywhere in the church and I had my eyes closed and she said nothing, do you think I would have been able to find her? Do you think I would have ran into some stuff? So that version of the game is exactly what it's like if we don't have God. We have no chance of ever finding God on our own. It's like we're wandering around in the darkness, searching and we're gonna run into a lot of stuff. We're gonna run into walls, we're gonna run into other people. We'll run into every bad choice we can possibly make, but we'll never find God on our own. But when Jesus calls to us through his word, then suddenly it's like the second time when my eyes were open. The Holy Spirit works in our hearts and our eyes are open, and then we're able to follow where Jesus calls. And we're able to follow the way Jesus wants us to go. And we're able to live our lives the way, with the help of the Holy Spirit, the way God would want us to live. Not perfectly, we're still going to make mistakes, we're still going to stumble around, but we'll be able to do it so much better when we have God helping us. Now, if we're going to try to live our lives following God with the help of the Holy Spirit, what are some things that we should do to help figure out what are the things we're supposed to be doing? Anyone have any ideas? Do you think maybe you should be going to church? Do you think maybe you should, oh, Harper? I didn't even have to give you a hint. I had to give the last group a hint. Yes, you should be reading your Bible. What else should you be doing? 
following after Jesus, one more. Praying. Oh, thank you so much. You are so right. If we're going to follow Jesus, we need to be able to know what Jesus would want us to do. And the best way to do that is to be constantly in conversation with God through prayer and reading the Bible and what God would want us to do through his holy word. So before I let you go back to your seats, thank you so much for the people who helped me. Let's go ahead and close with a word of prayer. And you can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for calling us through your holy word. Help us with the help of the Holy Spirit to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, thank you so much for coming up today.
Well, it's certainly true that every one of us faces challenges in our lives, and from time to time, you and I might even enjoy those challenges. Challenges test our ability to accomplish a certain task or project. They also test our ability to trust in God. Now in our text today, we find our Lord Jesus challenging two brothers, Simon Peter and his brother Andrew. And the challenge is a very simple one. Jesus says, follow me. Now last week in our gospel lesson, we heard how John the Baptist encountered our Lord Jesus and said those familiar words, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We talked about how in that culture, for the Jews of that day, they would have thought of two things. They would have thought of the Passover, the sacrifice of the Passover lamb and the blood on the doorpost and lentils of the home, where the angel of death would pass over that house and not slay the firstborn. And we also talked about the Day of Atonement, when the high priest would sacrifice a lamb and take the blood into the Holy of Holies. Now, since that time, in our Lord's baptism, which occurred before that, we also, the events of today's text, it's been about a year that has passed. And we're also told something else in our gospel lesson today. We're told that Jesus heard that John, who had baptized him and had witnessed, behold, the Lamb of God, was now in prison. Why was that? We remember John preached a message of repentance. He had a way of calling people out in their sins. And apparently he did that with King Herod because Herod had married his brother's wife. And John called him out for that. So Herod had John thrown into prison and was now facing an uncertain future. Now, <clears throat> with that in mind, we find Jesus leaving Nazareth and going to Galilee to a city by the name of Capernaum, which was on the Sea of Galilee. It was a fishing village. And this was also the region where two of the tribes of Israel that is a tribe of Zebulon and Naphtali. This was their home ground, so to speak. Now Jesus went there not to fish for fish. Jesus went there for a specific purpose. He went there to fulfill biblical prophecy. And we heard that prophecy in our Old Testament lesson just a moment ago. It goes like this, land of Zebulon, land of Naphtali, the way by the sea along the Jordan. The people living in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death. A light has dawned. Now sadly, many people in Jesus' day ignored this prophecy as well as other prophecies for that matter. Many also didn't want to believe the promises of God's word. They thought it foolish that the Messiah, the promised Messiah, would come out of a small an obscure fishing village. They thought the Messiah would come out of Jerusalem. Why? Because that's where the temple was. That's where that was the power center for the nation of Israel. And the people in our Lord's day were looking forward to, they thought the Messiah was going to come and throw out the Romans and restore Israel to its former power and glory, which they enjoyed under King David. But the scriptures, the prophecies very, were very clear. God's servant would not be a king sitting on a golden throne. He would be, the Messiah would be a suffering servant. <coughs> His throne would be a rugged cross on a hill outside of Jerusalem known as Calvary. Now, <clears throat> this reminds us all of the utter necessity for you and for I and for everyone who confesses Christ as Lord and Savior to trust in the clear teachings of God's Holy Word. Not our own opinions, not the stuff we hear out there in this sinful fallen world in which you and I live. We trust in God and God alone. As the scripture says, your word is a lamp to my feet 
and a light to my path. Now again, we are told, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Now that verse specifically speaks to the, the season we're in right now. And that, of course, is the season of Epiphany. The word Epiphany actually means, if you don't already know, it means appearance. Referring to the appearance of God's own Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who came into the world in the fullness of time. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So why is it? Why is it that so many people do not want to open their eyes and walk and live by the light of God's holy word. Why is it that it's so often it is our tendency to try to do things our own way rather than God's way? Well, Scripture, of course, finds it, it gives us an answer to that. We're told that we're by nature spiritually blind, spiritually dead, and enemies of God. And we see that sinful nature raise its ugly head, yes, even in the lives of the apostles. Those that walk with Jesus and breathe the very same air that Jesus breathed. Take, for example, the Apostle Peter. What did he do? He sat and listened and learned from Jesus. He was the chief of the apostles. But what did he do? He let his sinful nature take over and denied the Lord, not once, but three times. What about Judas? Here was a man who, again, heard firsthand the promises of God's own Messiah, the Savior, but yet he betrayed our Lord for 30 pieces of silver. If that wasn't bad enough, in his despair he went off and <coughs> took his own life rather than trusting in the promises of God and the promise of forgiveness, which is a free gift through faith in the Savior. Sin has a way of rearing its ugly head in all of our lives. Even the Apostle Paul, who wrote 13 of the 27 books of the New Testament, lamented his struggle with his sinful nature. You remember what he wrote in Romans? He said, the good I want to do, this I do not do. No, the evil I don't want to do, this I keep doing. O wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? And then, of course, Paul answers his own rhetorical question. Thanks be to God, we have victory in our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus speaks to every one of us today, and always. He says, come, follow me. But what does it mean to follow Jesus? What well, means to put him first in our lives? It means to let the light of his love and his forgiveness shine in our lives each and every day. Most often, we as Christians look to the pages of God's holy word and the saints that came before us for inspiration as we live our lives. That being true, let me submit to you today. Let's not ignore the witness to the truth of Christ as our Lord and Savior that is often provided in our world today that too often is perhaps overlooked. Now, I asked for a survey at the first service this morning, and I asked, how many of you watch the Nas National Basketball Association? And guess what? Not a single hand went up. Now, all of that being said, how many of you know who Joe Mazzulla might be? If you don't know, he is the head coach of the Boston Celtics. Now this happened about a month ago, and if you want to see it for yourself, you search for Joe Mazzola on YouTube. But he was being interviewed, and one reporter asked him, uh, did you get to visit with the royal family? If not, what was it like to have them in the building? And here's the amazing thing that Joe Mazzola said. He said, do you mean Jesus, Mary, and Joseph? The reporter just kind of laughed a little bit under her breath and said, No, the Prince and Princess of Wales. 
To which Missoula replied, I'm only familiar with one royal family. I don't know much about that one. Thanks. What an incredible, winsome witness to the royalty of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God's greatest gift to the world, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Who could not watch Joe make that witness and not be moved by the sincerity, the sincerity of his faith? And again, if you want to see that for yourself, and I encourage you to do so, look it up on your phone. It's on YouTube. I want to encourage all of us <clears throat> in this new year to try to follow in those footsteps. To again make a conscious effort to be witnesses of the love of God in Christ Jesus as God gives us that opportunity. Well, how do we do that? Well, first and foremost, I want to encourage you to examine your own heart. I want you to remember that light and darkness can't exist in the same place. What are the sins that you are struggling with in your own life? What is it that the devil uses to trip you up? What is it that you need God's help with? I encourage you to acknowledge that sin before God and ask him for the help that you need to live your life to his glory and to fight that battle against sin in your life each and every day. And then, having done that, let the light of your faith shine in your life. Live your life in such a way that people can see Christ in you and through you. And there are some practical ways that you can do that. It could be something as simply as telling somebody you're visiting with after you're finished with the conversation, God bless you, or God bless your day. Or have you ever thought, texting of course, everybody texts nowadays. Have you ever thought about someone you know that maybe if you just send a little text, give them a little bit of encouragement, uh, through that, that it might enlighten their lives. Or I know it sounds old-fashioned, or how about just maybe sending someone a card through the mail, just telling them that you're thinking about them and you're remembering them in your prayers. Having received those type of things myself, I can tell you how important it is for us to let the light of God's love shine in our lives. It can make the difference between someone having a bad day and having a joyful day and being uplifted so that they too can be witnesses of God's love, peace, and forgiveness. And finally, the most important thing of all, and I've emphasized this the last couple of weeks, but I want to continue. Get into God's Word. Set Aside some time every day, whether it's in the morning or at night before you go to bed, or sometime in the afternoon, to read God's Word. It is the handbook of life. It's from God Himself. It is God the Holy Spirit who moved the holy writers to write those very thoughts and words that they wrote down. I mentioned before, I'll say it again, the Bible is the all-time bestseller in history. Over 7 billion copies printed. For it to be the all-time bestseller, it has to make a difference in people's lives. That's proof for you and me as to how important God's Word is. It's the handbook of life, folks. It's God's message to you and to me and to the entire world. And so as we find ourselves in this in-between time, between Christmas and the beginning of Lent, which will begin too soon, coming up about the middle of February, in this time of Epiphany, we remember that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The Savior Jesus Christ wants His light to shine brightly in your life and my life. Let's heed the words of the Savior this morning and always, which He spoke to Simon Peter and his brother Andrew. Jesus said, follow me. May we endeavor to follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and be found faithful every day of our lives. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses our understanding keep your hearts and minds unto life everlasting. May God be with you as we together follow Jesus 
our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue with the offertory. church. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for your guidance and forgiveness that you have given us through the Holy Spirit. Bless these prayers as they are brought before you according to your grace. Amen. Merciful Lord, be with Bonnie Ewer, who is in the hospital. Bless the nurses and bless the doctors as they watch over her in the hospital. Lord, in your mercy, Blessed Lord, be with Grant Snodgrass, who had shoulder surgery on Friday. Be with Al Collison, Doug Johnson, and River Peekenschneider, who also continue to recover from surgery. Bless their doctors and nurses, and bring your swift hand of healing upon them. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, be with Myrna Voss, Danny Anderson, Jesse Sievers, Tracy Walters, Karen Larson, Kevin Redschneider, and Russell Ben Stratton, as they continue to recover or are battling their various illnesses. Lord, in your mercy. Wondrous Lord, continue to be with Shane Dozy and Dawn Tucker, who continue to battle ALS. Be with them in this time of need. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate Lord, be with Dawn Flynn, Dallas Gansbaum, Barry Tejan, Pastor Walter, Raylene Wiesman, Ivy Clausen, Shauna Gosman, and Jolene Buss as they continue to battle cancer. Send your healing hands upon them and be with them. Lord, in your mercy. Glorious Lord, thank you for the opportunity to provide excellent academic preparation for the children we serve. We give thanks to share Jesus' amazing love with their children.